Kailangan yeah. bigyan ng certificate. <laughs> yeah, ako hindi pa. But I'm, I'm going through it. Radio, 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 Radio,
Meron? Ano nga ba ang meron? Paano nga bang mabuhay ng tapat sa meron? Don't you wish you can relive your philo classes? The terror teachers? The terrible oral exams? Or the even terrifying but liberating and life-changing aha moments? Lundagin mo, baby! Here's your chance! Lundagin mo, baby! Kasama ang mga pilosopong sina Jovi Miroy at Ron Kapinding. Lundagin mo, baby! Leaping upward, leaping forward. Lundagin mo, baby! Leaping to greater heights, to greater wisdom, to greater magis. Lundag na, Ateneo! Oh po. Hi everyone. Hi Ron. Hi, Hi Sir We're Joby. Back. We're back. So we did not uh, had uh, we did not hold this program that last week. Last no? week. May may magkakaiba kami personal na dahil ni Sir Joby. May nabuti <laughs> namin na imbes na pag-show kami ng natataranta, uh, uh, wag na muna kami mag-show. Anyway, uh, kakaiba talaga kasi itong ating mga kalagayan ngayon sa sa pandemic, sa quarantine, no. But anyway, we're happy to uh, be back. We miss you. Uh, I hope you miss us too. Okay? Ito ay June 15, no? Sa na naman po June 15. Uh, so, para na, mapansin nyo siguro, para medyo nagsimula kami ng mga 5.15, ganyan. Ay, kasi balak din namin matapos sa mga 6.15. So, huwag po kayo mag-alala. Uh, hindi naman namin isa short change yung isang oras na na hinahanap-hanap nyo kami sana. <laughs> Oo oh, nga. Sir, kamusta po kayo? Nang nakaraang dalawang linggo, di tayo naka- nagka- sa lamuha. Oh, uh, lagi naman may family emergency sa uh, sa amin eh. So, sana ipagdasal nyo kaming lahat dito sa aming uh, pamilya, sa aming tahanan. Anyway, this week I decided uh, the show must go on. Apo, apo. The show must go on. Ako rin eh. Parang uh, we never wanted to have, unless talaga may uh, holiday, no? we never wanted to have two weeks tapos magkasunod na wala. At the, at, at the most, one week pero kami ma uh, kung may antala man no? pero kung sakali pipilitin na namin bumalik agad sa inyo. So dito na muna po tayo sa ating palabas na lundagin mo baby. Kasama ko si Sir Joby Miroy at si may Justin. Babatiin ka ba? Oh, may gusto akong batiin no. Uh, babatiin ko ang lahat ng mga naikinig ngayon at uh, binabati ko ang lahat ng uh, Uh, maligayang araw ng kasarinlan, araw ng kalayaan. Ano ba yung sinasabi nating Mabuhay ang kalayaan. Mabuhay ang kalayaan, mabuhay ang Pilipinas. Uh, at uh, medyo uh, may kinalaman din sa ganyan ating paksa ngayon. Pero uh, samantala, habang di pa namin pinag-uusapan yung paksa, yun lang. Binabati ko kayo ng uh, a belated, uh, belated uh, Independence Day noong Viernes. Uh, Although nakakulong tayong lahat. Nakakulong tayo lahat. Siguro ibang klase. Dahil naka-quarantine tayo. Oo. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, baka ibang klaseng uh, kalayaan ang pinapa pinapa uh, reflect na pinapa isip pinapa nilay sa atin ngayon. So gusto ko rin batiin Sir Joby you know, sa samantaling oh. ko na uh, uh, nung araw ng kalayaan nagdiwang ng birthday niya si Mr. Pagsi ang kanyang 93rd birthday. So si Sir wow. Pagsi 93 years old he's still in the high school trying as much as possible to 
no, na pagbigyan lahat ng mga humihiling na sana ay marinig siya. Uh, dun do. So, maligayang kaarawan po, Sir Pansy. I wonder if Sir Pansy will do online classes. I haven't seen him though in any mm-hmm. online thing, no? Siguro recorded, tapos lalabas yung kanyang interview. But oh, okay. for him to we, we wear earphones and be <laughs> mindful of the... Hindi ko pa nakita ang ginagawa niya. Si Sir Pagsi ang nag-hire sa akin at nag-permanent sa akin. Ha? Siya siya ang chairman ng Pilipino noon. Uh, kaya malaki ang aking utang na loob at malaki sa akin paiging uh, educator ang uh, utang ko kay Sir Pagsi. Ah, ganun din, si Sir Joni Salvador, ang aming principal sa junior high school, ay nagdiwang noong, oh. noong uh, kahapon lang, noong uh, Sunday, June 14. Si Joni, talaga. Ah. At kayo naman, sa araw na ito, talaga may birthday si estudyante kong uh, Rex Perios. Uh, binabati kita, happy birthday. Si Cathy Cunana, nakasama natin. Uh, Cathy Cunana, natin, alum, alum, yes. Alumna, ng, alumna ng Tanghala Katanya. At, at uh, kapatid ni Richard. Kapatid ng mahal na mahal kong si Richard Cunana, uh, may he rest in peace. Uh, si Kewe Almeniana Peña ng aking uh, high school friend. Uh, si Una Fernando Lu na kas- kasama natin sa si Una. Uh, tanga- yes. atin na yun, eh. yeah. So yes. tomorrow, birthday naman ni Jelen Perlas at ang uncle ko na si Tito Jun Kapinding. Happy birthday, Tito Jun. Yan ay mo, may dahilan ba't, ko, ba't ako umaandar mula sa araw na ito? Sa seven, uh, 17th naman sa Webes, si Susain Alvarez, co-teacher ko sa high school, at si Mr. Paul Daza. Do you know Mr. Paul Daza? Of course! Oh, yes, birthday niya sa... Oh. Sa Thursday. My most beloved. Ay, sa Thursday, sa 17th, sa Wednesday. Sa, sa Wednesday, si Paul. Si Mr. Paul. Uh, uh, hi, Paul. Paul so we are greeting you. Yeah, so, 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 so Wednesday po, birthday niya. Si Susain Alvarez kasamay niya. Co-teacher ko rin sa high school. And lastly, yes. on Friday, ay birthday ng mama ko. Kaya ko in-extend para umabot na yung bati ko sa mama ko. Happy birthday, mama, on June 18. Yun din ang anniversary nila ng papa ko. So going strong. So there, I, there were... So they are they are two years older than my age, so they are already forty eight years of uh, marriage. marriage. Yeah. Uh-huh. So yeah, so happy anniversary for to my parents and happy birthday, Mama. Uh, I I also happy birthday then kay uh, kay Glenn Mas sa June eighteen ka birthday niya Mama. June eighteen uh, Glenn Mas. At happy si, uh, birthday. Uh, si Jericho ikot katalan ka birthday niya Mama ko isang dante ko gusto yanta niya. So sa inyo lahat uh, maligayang bati uh, birthday man yan o anniversary. Uh, nasa kasama kayo sa aming uh, gunita at mga dadrangit. Ikaw, sir. Oh, I mean, iba naman doon kilala mo na, no? Oh, sila una. Uh, si Kathy. Si Kathy, yeah. yeah. Yun lang. So, yun po. Gusto lang namin ipakilala ngayon ang aming palabas. Ang aming palabas ngayon ay uh, uh, nung nakaraang dalawang linggo, ma- maingay na ito. Eh. Kaya gusto rin namin pag-usapan. Alam nyo naman kami ni Sir Joby, lulundagin namin yan. Alam man namin o hindi. Para lang maging, maging di ba maging bahagi ng usapin, kundi Makibahagi lang sa usapin. Di namin alam kung di kami mga eksperto rito. But might as well because uh, we're, it's all around. Anyway, so bakit hindi sa Radyo Katipunan o sa Dundagin Mabay pag-usapan namin. So ang aming paksa ngayong araw na ito ay tungkol sa ma- maugong na maugong na, na anti-terror bill na, na, na inihain. No? At uh, ngayon ay naipatupad na yata. So hindi mamaya pa, mas maintindihan natin. Pa, hindi pa, hindi pa. Hindi pa, hindi pa. Ah. <laughs> okay. Uh, na, na ano na siya, na-approbahan na ng both houses. Well, we'll ask our guests later. Oh, late, later. No? So, uh, uh, maingay yan. In the past uh, week or so, yan ang naririnig natin. Sayang wala lang tayong show. If we proceeded with last week's show, baka nga possible yun na rin ang kinag-usapan namin ni Sir Juby. So yan. So, uh, tungkol sa anti-terror bill, uh, may naririnig kami mga hashtag na junk, uh, anti-terror bill, o kung ano man. So, mamaya, lilinawin natin lahat ng yan para hindi tayo parang naguhula lang kung ano dapat maging opinion para mas medyo napag-isipan ang ating iisipin. Um, yun lang. At um, yun ang aming, ang pamagat namin ngayon ay uh, naisip ko kasi uh, kasi ang parang damdamin ay anti-terror yan. So, dapat gusto natin yun ang mga panaisipan eh so may so we'd like to understand why even if the name already is somehow seemingly not negative but there are some anxiety ng ibang tao so yun ang gusto natin right. inti- so for that let's have this video okay, that video can uh, also enlighten our yeah. discussion widen the discussion so, so let's this have a short this video. video please uh, don't leave us uh, magandang and warm hopefully up by ito. that time we have our guest yeah exactly yeah, already exactly. Yeah. So, Justin, Justin you want to play the video? Away? Yeah. Pag po kayo alis, babalik po kami. Hindi po ito commercial. Kasama po ito sa aming pre-lexyo. <laughs> Parang pre-lexyo. Lundagin mo, baby. Okay.
Okay, so medyo, uh, so ang, ang pamagat na naisip namin ngayon ay anti-terror o anti-terror. Okay? <laughs> Gumamit ako ng dalawang magkaibang, oh. magkahawig na prefix pero magkaibang kaulugan. Anti-terror ay parang contra-terror. Anti-terror is pre-terror. So ano ba talaga? Parang may dalawa, oh. yung, yung dalawang so, pag-usap. Makikita natin na tang, uh, may mga opposing forces. Yes, yes. You oh. want me to be the one to, vid- to play the video? Can I be the one to play the video? Uh, Oh, game na. Game na si Sir si Justin. Ah, game na. Oh, game na. Okay. Take it All away, right. Justin. Take it please, away. Uh, please uh, take over. We'll see you. There are three factors that are particularly important when analyzing terrorism and counterterrorism. First, the terrorist strategy. Second, what the terrorists actually want to achieve. And third, how to best fight them. Terrorism can be thought of as a strategy, as how some rational actors think about what their goals should be and how they best pursue them. If we think about terrorism as a strategy, perhaps the best analogy is one that my co-author Tom Parker has used. He calls terrorism political jiu-jitsu. The point of many terrorist groups is to try to exploit the strength of the state, to take the strength of the state and turn it against itself. Terrorists thus create a trap that many states walk into. Almost no democracies have fallen as a consequence of terrorism, but many have overreacted to terrorism and thus made terrorist groups stronger, more popular, and given them more recruits. Terrorist strategy, in a sense, involves setting a trap for the state, and states very often walk in straight into it. The second main point is about the heterogeneity of terrorist groups. All these different terrorist groups have a range of different aims. Some want to overthrow political and economic systems, some want to become part of the political and economic systems and have their own state. But they have one thing in common. They all want to provoke the state to overreact. And it is surprising how often they succeed. And this takes us to the third point, which is how best to fight terrorism. In short, we have three different approaches to terrorism. See it as a crime, send in the police. See it as a security threat, send in the army. See it as part of a political problem, and send in the diplomats. Today, most counter-terrorist strategies employ an element of all three. I think it's fair to say that what most states are trying to achieve today in counter-terrorist strategies is robustness. It's a strategy that is tailored to the particular threat at hand, but that takes a long-term perspective rather than a short-term perspective. If we've learned anything from counterterrorism over a century and a half, it's that there are no magic silver bullets. There are no quick fixes. It's almost impossible to defeat or annihilate a terrorist group. Today, most states and international organizations are approaching counterterrorism policy uh, by means which we might call containment. The idea is that you can fight it in the short term, you can try to prevent it, you can deal with the consequences of an attack, you can prosecute the perpetrators of an attack, but to some extent, states have to live with an, some level of political violence. Even if you can bring armed groups, or terrorist groups, into peace processes, there will be dissidents who try and spoil these processes by carrying on violent campaigns. A key point is therefore that terrorism must be contained in the long term, but not necessarily defeated overnight. In fact, efforts to defeat terrorism overnight are often counterproductive because they involve strong, sometimes repressive measures that end up giving the terrorists more recruits and playing into the terrorist narrative. If there is one lesson that we can learn from the last hundred years of liberal democracies fighting terrorism, it is that they must not abandon the moral high ground. Terrorism is best fought within the rules of law by means linked to police and intelligence. And perhaps the most dangerous thing a state can do is to walk in to the trap set by terrorists by adopting quick, ill-considered, radical legislation in the wake of a terrorist attack, rather than thinking of it as a threat that must be contained both in the short term, the medium term, and the long term.
kasama na natin ulit ang tagapakinig at uh, uh, magandang balita po. Uh, pagkatapos ng palabas na narito na ulit tayo sa ating balitakpakan at kasama na rin po natin dito ang ating pinagtipitaghanan at uh, minamahalaga ang kanyang pagpapaunlak na si uh, si Ma'am Senator yes, Risa Hontivero. Risa Hontivero, so Hello. our batchmate. Yeah. Yes, batchmate siya ni Sir Juby. <laughs> yes, and classmate, di ba? Yeah, yeah. yeah. classmate. Yeah. Blockmate. In many, yeah, blockmate. Yeah. <laughs> In many classes, yes. Yeah. Kinikwento ni Sir Juby kanina, uh, Senator, na may isa raw siyang book na nasa iyo pa. You will not remind her of that. <laughs> <laughs> Already got <laughs> another book. Ganun, copy ganun, of that book. Ganun kayo ka classmate. No, ibig sabihin, ganun yung mga... <laughs> Magkakaklase dati ron. Yes. Pero hindi ko pala sa akin mo. Ang libro. No. Nasa akin ba? Three decades later. Never mind, Riz. I already got another copy of the book. Oh my God, I'm sorry. It's okay. okay. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so para, para marami tayong mapag-usapan dito sa ating mm-hmm. session, nagang 6.15 tayo ngayon or so, um, uh, simulan na natin ang ating ano. So, ang, ang pamagat na pinili namin, pinili ko ngayon na ilagay ay anti-terror o anti-terror. Tapos, uh, bakit tila ba may terrifying ang tila ba, hindi namin alam, no? ang, ang mm-hmm. anti-terror bill na to sa aming mga nararanasan sa mga nakaraang mga mga post na mga tao at gusto namin sana bago kami bumuo ng mga sarili naming mga palagay at pananaw gusto rin namin magtanong-tanong at bahagi ito ng aming mga pagtatanong na may imbita ka namin uh, Ma'am uh, Risa. So, mm-hmm. si ang mga tanong namin ay nagmula rin sa mga kaibigan namin mm-hmm. uh, but uh, basically uh, magsisimula ba ako sa Jovi? Uh, go ahead because uh, I, I can feel your excitement. Yes, yes. So, <laughs> Hindi ko lang mawalaan ng chronology ng mga uh, tanong na ito. Galing ito sa isang kaibigan namin na co-host din namin sa ibang programa dito sa Radio mm-hmm. Katipulan, si Chris Castillo. Yes. What are the benefits, if any, and what dangers does it pose? Ito daw pong uh, uh, terror bill. Okay? Mm-hmm. So, at, uh, or uh, actually, marami yung ganyan yung tanong. No? Uh, what the context? Why now? Right. Uh, why is there seeming it? urge? Yeah. Masayang ko na lang kaya. Baka mas may isang sagot lang dito. Si yeah. kay, kay Chris Castillo, why is there seeming urgency? Si Ariel din. Kasi magkakahawig naman po, uh, mm-hmm. Senadora, baka may isang sagot lang talaga to. Si Ariel naman, Ariel Diction, ng isa rin programa rito, what prompted the, uh, what prompted the, ano, of the bill? The, uh, the, what, what prompted the authors of the bill? Uh-huh. And propose it? Ano di, mo, di umanong urgency ng pagpapanukala nito? Mm. Miriam De Los Santos naman, bakit ito at bakit ngayon? So, so basically, yan ang tanong ko, Ms. Miriam. <laughs> <laughs> y- yung isang buong ano yun, kahit ano sa anong bahagi nun ang kaya niyong pabigyang linaw uh, o kahit ng konti lang doon, kayo pong bahala, ma'am. Sige, ma'am. Sige. Well, Una, gustong-gusto ko yung pamagat nyo, bagamat nakakatakot. <laughs> Kasi nga, anti-terror or anti-terror. Are we, are we before a time of terror? At yung mga tulad namin ni Jovi na naging martial law babies noon, uh, studyante na kami dyan sa Ateneo nung uh, uh, Ninoy assassination, yes. hanggang snap elections, hanggang civil disobedience campaign, hanggang people power revolution at naging bahagi ang Ateneo at mga Atenista doon. Talagang yes. parang nung 2007 na nagbagsak yung presidente no ng 2006 ng state of emergency, ganun din ang pakiramdam ko ngayon at baka yung iba sa amin sa henerasyon namin, uh, contemplating uh, itong napipintong pagiging batas ng anti-terrorism bill. And I think importante na paghiwalayin yung uh, bakit finally ito ng mga authors sa parehong house at yung bakit naging urgent siya. Kasi ako, I'm willing to concede na may mga authors na gusto lang talaga nilang uh, ayusin yung tingin nila ay pagkukulang or pagkakamali sa lumang batas which was the Human Security Act yes, yes. 2007. Yes. Na, pero uh, bakit naging urgent? No? Yung tanong din ni Ms. Miriam. Kasi nung, nung biglang in, I, I, I'm willing to believe that maybe even the authors were surprised. Bakit ito yung sinertify as urgent? In the middle of a global pandemic. In the middle of so much economic suffering, lalo na sa mga mahihirap at yung mga MSMEs natin, micro, small, and medium enterprises, sa gitna ng mga 
quarantines na kailangan nating i-impose yes. sa ating mga sarili. Bakit ito yung naging urgent? Hindi ba dapat sana mas urgent yung dinedebate pa namin hanggang ngayon? Nabitin na nga ng adjournment na um, uh, relief bill, yung stimulus package bill. The last time I looked, yan ang urgent. Yeah. So the stimulus package was not, uh, was not certified as urgent. Yes. It was certified as urgent uh, uh, by the president in the middle of the pandemic and quarantines and all the uh, plenary debate. So, so, so Senator Risa, mm -hmm. so is there truth that according to intelligence, terrorism mm -hmm. is on the rise? Alam mo, uh, as, a, as a citizen on the ground, I don't mm -hmm. feel that sense of urgency about terrorism per se. As for yes. example, nung nagkaroon ng armed conflicts between the Maute terror groups group and yeah. the armed forces yeah. and PNP in Marawi three yeah. years ago na hanggang ngayon nakatiwangwang ang rehabilitation. I don't feel now the sense of urgency about terrorism as nung sinalaka yung Sambuanga City. I don't feel the sense of terrorist about terrorism now, the sense of urgency nung may mga terror actions noon, no? nung nakaraang mga taon. The yeah. sense of urgency we do feel and that I feel Filipinos feel ay tungkol sa health at tungkol sa ekonomiya. Yes. So, yes, diba? Yeah. Saan bigla nang galing ito? Yeah. So, uh, why do we need to oppose this? Well, I believe that we need to oppose this because um, just looking inside the bill, ha, mamaya there's a context pa again outside. Sa loob ng bill, there are at least three um, issues that really give me pause. Masyadong pinalawak yung definition ng terrorism, Joby. Yes. Hindi na lang yung commonsensical definition natin ng terrorism na acts intended to kill people, to destroy property in order to strike terror in our hearts as citizens and force our government to act against its better judgment na kung anong mabuti para sa mamamayan. Ngayon, sa da masyadong malawak na definition, pati intention and how is that to be gauged but the um, uh, threat but the proposal so alam niyo yon masyado nang tumatawid sa larangan ng hindi pa talaga yung aktwal na aksyon at yung aktwal na plano para gawin yung aksyon na yan which which uh, ordinary citizens we could call terrorism Tapos may mga provision pa tulad ng warrantless arrest and detention. My gosh! <laughs> Haba to 14 days, dalawang yes. minuto. Eh, para nga sa atin, ma-warrantless arrest, detain ka lang ng kahit isang araw lang yes. o isang gabi, lalo na para sa aming mga babae. Nakatakot na yun. Labing yes. atap na kaya. Yes, yes, na, yes. Na, so, nakatwira na na po ba yung, yung, yung feature na yan? What, what, is, what necessitates the warrantless arrest? Ano bang katwiran dyan nila? at least nung nagtusulong? Na, well, na, na, nung nag interpolation kami at sa period of amendments, uh, ipinaliwanag naman ng mga authors at uh, siguro ganun din ang naging uh, deliberasyon sa House na kailangan ng mas mahabang panahon para talaga isolidify yung case. Uh, tapos mas maiksi naman daw itong labing apat na araw kumpara sa ibang mga kahit sa Asia Pacific region na mas mahaba. Okay, mas dihamak na mas mahaba pero kunyari sa Malaysia mas mahaba yung kanila. Pero kahit yung mga civil rights um, advocates doon sinasabing you know, within those days uh, of warrantless arrest and detention, torture is very possible and still yeah. happens, no? So hindi ito usapin ng mas maiksi naman yung atin. But two weeks sounds long to be still. It's yeah, not yeah. an but argument. You, you mentioned a third reason. Yes. And yeah. then uh, a third reason would be ah, yung ano, preliminary proscription of organizations as terrorist organizations. So by the action uh, of a court on the instance of the law enforcement authorities, pwedeng tagurian ng terrorist organization ng isang organisasyon meaning subject to arrest yung mga miyembro niya subject to seizure yung property niya before it even has its day in court before it can even oh prove it's not terrorist and the burden of proof is shifted to them to the accused they're not terrorists yeah. rather than under the old human security act properly nasa court ng law enforcement authorities kasi syempre at saka bakit ka kailangan i-detain ng mas matagal 
to to solidify the case. Dapat yung intel and yung case build up before. It's already there. Yeah. there. Yeah. It's already there. Yeah. Hindi hindi natin dapat binabaliktad yung due process. Yeah. So yun yung para sa akin tatlo sa pinaka And it uh, therefore war warrantless means it doesn't have to go through the court. Yes. Yeah. Hindi kailangan na may warrant of arrest to mm. effect your arrest. Mm. Uh, dati kailangan kung may warrantless arrest kunyari in caught in the act ka of a terrorist action, mm. syempre, dapat dakpin ka para mapigilan yeah. yung terrorist action mo, makakapatay yun, makakasira yun. So, but before, under the old Human Security Act, kapag may inaresto without warrant, detain, kailangan ipresent siya before a judge in the court. Ngayon, yeah, at least man lang, no? Wala <laughs> na yung abias corpus, kailangan ipresenta mo yung katawan. That's, mo that's, that's already a signal of something, di ba? It really could be a, a suspension signal. of the habeas, yeah. Oh, oh. yeah. Senator Risha, so yes. pa, da, uh, sa kabila nung tatlong dahilan na yun, kahit tatlo yun, no, uh, bakit kaya isinusulong ito ng maraming mababatas? Uh, ano kaya, if, uh, baka pinipilit ko na kayong put yourself in their shoes, pero yes. sige nga po. <laughs> ano Ayun, po? Uh, well, um, gaya nung iniisip ko kanina, uh, I'm willing to believe uh, a number of them na gusto lang talaga nilang uh, ayusin or pagandahin yung lumang Human Security Act. Pero yung kasing nag-trigger nitong acceleration at kaya uh, nagulat ang mga tao, uh, 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 natakot at nagtaka. Bakit ito yung priority but hindi yung pandemic at yung economics? Because we look at it in the context of uh, other actions in the past several years until today yung decision striking a blow against press freedom yung decision sa kasi ni uh, Maria Reza yes. at Ray yeah. Santos and the previous years the previous four years na sabi nga ni Nathan Kimpo contested democracy itong sa atin there have been um, from day one practically unrelenting systematic uh, calculated moves uh, against democratic institutions at laban sa mga sources of proper checks and balances, yeah. sources of proper, um, tawag mo dun, I, I'm freezing your moment, a term na <laughs> kailangan may, nag, yes. may nagbabalanse sa, yes. sa kapangyarihan. For uh, the separation of powers, separation check and balance, civil society, society, of course. Oh, yeah, fiscalizing. Right. Uh, um, uh, so I was looking at the the anti-terrorism bills that say in Australia. In fact, oh, yeah. what they what they did was to actually define terrorism. <laughs> they needed to make those laws so that terrorism would be defined. But you're telling us it there is actually the definition is has become very ambiguous or very ambiguous, very broad, subject to interpretation. Yes. At ang ultimo magi interpret yung isang bagong uh, I, A, I, uh, ATI, anti, uh, ATC, Anti-Terrorism Council, uh, yes. composed of appointees of the president, so iba't ibang heads ng executive departments and agencies. So, teka muna, bakit parang mas lalong nawala ng papel ang judiciary uh, sa ganitong mga proseso? I mean, you know, any, lalo na ordinaryong mamamayan, you know, not even speaking of a, a real terrorist person. Ordinary mama mayan, suspected of being a terrorist. Ano naman ang laban niya sa all-powerful state, which yeah. has all the mandates and powers? And the uh, protection, yung Bill of Rights natin sa constitution. Exactly, yeah. And there is there is that pattern, no, of uh, there is. Of, of the war on the poor and the. Uh, yung anti-terrorism council, uh, senadora. Yung anti-terrorism council ay binuo ng presidente. So I understand. I understand na yung yung warrantless arrest, 14 days, burden of proof, kahit na parang nakakapangilag yun. Mm -hmm. eh, pero ang, mag, ang mag-iimbestiga rin ay yung Anti-Terrorism Council. Sila rin ang mag-aalabas ng pasya. So ba parang... So parang, o, o, sige, dudusahin ko na yung 14 days. Basta isang ibang ibang grupo sana, iba sa dumakip sa akin. Exactly. <laughs> yung wala sa dumakip sa akin, ba exactly. Para at least kahit matagal, meron na akong mas, uh, mas, uh, mas kampante ako na baka hindi. Pero ito, exactly. yung mismong grupo ng dumakip, uh, parang... parang diba? uh, paano yung oversight doon? Paano yung uh, checks and balances? Yeah, pa paano yung fiscalizing? So... Da, sana uh, pinaganda na lang nila or inayos sa tingin nilang dapat iayos yung lumang Human Security Act and not turned it into something 
really it's quite different in nature ah. at uh, kung isipin nyo na ito ay magiging bagong instrumento sa kamay ng isang administrasyon which has proven to be quite um, eager to overreach uh, in terms of one branch of government, yung executive, in terms of one office, yung office of the, the president. Ang hirap talaga, lalong na wawala ng balanse among the three branches of government na dapat may balanse para naman protektahan yung ating demokrasya. Yeah. So, so Ron, you want to ask, well, Carmela's, Carmela Abel's question, Risa. Yeah. Uh, how, 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 before that, siguro, no, is this a done deal? Kaya nga po, uh, alam po, naprobahan na, pero ano pong kalagayan niya ngayon? Na, well, ang, ang na parliamentary ba? status niya, ika nga, na transmit na ng Kongreso sa Office of the President, iniintay na lang ang pirma ni Presidente or na by some miracle, i-veto niya or kahit hindi niya pirmahan, pag hindi niya vinito, in 30 days, it will lapse into law. I see. So, mm, pero may sinabi si presidential spokesperson Roque na hindi naman ibig sabihin na dahil sinertify niya as urgent, automatic kung pipirmahan niya. Hindi ko alam kung totoong posibilidad yon or paasa lang. Siguro yung vivito uh, niya yan. <laughs> Piningi niya, no? sinertify as urgent. And then, sinabi naman ni the, uh, Justice Secretary uh, Menardo Guevara na mas may binibigan akong timbang yung salita niya kesa dun sa isa na pag-aaralan pa daw nila within 30 days ba yun or 15 days. So, well, uh, ako naman, even on days when I feel more pessimistic than optimistic, I'm still hopeful. So, syempre... Uh, <laughs> I think, Risa, abang... between the two of us, you're more hopeful. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't have stayed there for a, lo a very <laughs> long <laughs> time. All <laughs> this time. Crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, in the in case that it does become a law, uh, what are the group of yeah, questions? Ako, so, 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 yung, so, so, sa kalagayan yung, natin ngayon, yeah. sa kalagayan natin ngayon, na yan pa lang naghihintay ng pirma may 30 days hmm. ano pa ang magagawa uh, o ano mga gustong pigilan pa yon no, para mabawi yon may follow up question ako diyan uh, hmm. senadora uh, kapag ano ang gagawin kapag hindi na mapipigilan so ang tanong ko habang hindi pa nakapatupad ano pa magagawa at kapag in the event na mangyari nga siya paganda rin kayo doon senadora ano naman hmm. kapag nandiyan na talaga so ito muna sa sa kalagayan ngayon na Sina Guevara, sina Roque ay sinasabi na baka naman pag-aaralan pa at baka hindi naman madaliin. At ano po yung pwede pa mga gawin natin na mga ayaw doon? Na mga may... Pwede pa rin natin gawin ay tignan talaga yung big picture na nabubuo. Tignan yung mga pirapirasong dinudugtong-dugtong para buuin yung puzzle at kasama niya yung nangyari kaninang umaga, yung desisyon laban kay Maria Reza at Ray Santos, desisyon laban sa freedom of the press, which is desisyon laban sa ating demokrasya at sa ating mga Pilipino. Um, at uh, maghanda. At gaya ng pinag-usapan natin kanina, Joby, na yes. okay lang matakot kasi nakakatakot naman talaga, pero wag lang tayo maduduwag. Alam natin na uh, uh, malamang mas sila yung natatakot. Kaya gusto nilang manahimik na lang tayo or uh, mag-shutdown tulad ng ginawa nila sa ABS-CBN. So kailangan ano, patuloy tayong dumama at umintindi at maghanda palagi na in every you know, creative, active, non-violent way kumilos para, para tutulan ito. Sobrang instructive sa akin these days yung kay Nee Moller, di ba, na first they came for this group, then that group, but each time I didn't speak kasi hindi naman ako miyembro dyan. And finally they came for me and there was no one left to speak up. And in that stunning documentary, yung A Thousand Cuts, yes. sinabi ko isang di ba, interviewee yeah. na, you know, we understand it this way, sila daw sa Rappler mm -hmm. na first they came for the journalists. And then we don't know anymore what happened after that. So kailangan wag nating tanggapin yung ganyang scenario na magmamaterialize at nasa sa atin yon na kailangan tutulan yan yung wag yes. nating but uh, um so is that that's from the point of view of um uh, i guess what i'm sensing there is that uh you, you guys have a plan but from the <laughs> well, we <laughs> but should from, we should yeah. plan and, 
and then and then with the with the let's say the Ateneo because both the Ateneo community and the DLSU community yeah. community have oh, have spoken against it, no? Um, and and so they are listening to us, uh, Visa. So what yes. what what steps do you do you envision that we should take? Yeah. There are to, to to continue the discourse with, yes, with this. Yes, of course. Yeah. Well, there are groups already preparing. Even if worse comes to worst, at mapirmahan yan or maglaps yan into law, yung batas na iyan. Uh, there are groups preparing to file cases in the Supreme Court, questioning the constitutionality of certain provisions of the law. There are groups, wonderful groups of artists, cultural workers, media practitioners several of whom already began to speak out today about the verdict against Maria and Ray. And these groups, this community, preparing indeed to launch uh, creative, artistic, cultural expressions of people's desire still for democracy yes. and the democratic space to remain open and a space yes. for people to stay. Yeah, to talk about democracy, diba? yes. which we seldom hear. <laughs> we, we seldom hear. It's becoming yeah. an endangered species. Yes, like yes. Um, the way uh, the administration has made yung diplomatic at uh, legal victory natin na makasaysayan sa The Hague vis-a-vis -vis ang China sa so West Philippine Sea. You know, they, they're treating it like a defeat. They're snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Ganon din ang pagtrato nila sa demokrasya. Uh, ginagawa nilang isang kasalanan, isang krimen, sa halip na isang virtue, isang yes. good oh. na dapat sinasabuhay natin. Yeah. Senator, yung, um, yun yung parang alam mong uh, nil, uh, niluluto ng mga uh, ibang mga grupo no pero yung sa sinabi na sinasabi niyo sa amin wag nating tanggapin uh, ano po yung version niya na action para sa mga ordinaryo mga mayan ang yeah. wag nating tanggapin uh, nagso social media kami ngayon nagde-discussion kami sa mga Zoom at Google Meets namin mm -hmm. talagang pero ano pa ho ba meron pa ho bang mga iba pang konkretong wag nating basta tanggapin kung meron tayong nararamdamang mali ano paano po ba isa buhay yun yung wag nating tanggapin Alagaan natin ngayon pa lang yung mga student publications natin kasi dyan din uusbong yung mga future Maria Rezas at Ray Santos at i-renew -re yung hanay ng mga journalists at media people dito sa ating bansa at si pa. Dapat ang matutunan nila ay press freedom is worth fighting for. Hindi yung kailangan kong manahimik kasi ano, magagalit yung otoridad at pwede nila kaming i-shut down or pwede nila kaming patahimikin. Kailangan uh, alagaan pa rin natin yung mga uh, student and youth organizations and all other organizations of basic sectors. Yung unang nagturo sa amin ni na Jovi nung kami yes. sa college ko, di ba? Ano ba tong noon hindi pa hindi pa natin alam yung salitang civil society organization, <laughs> mass movement, you know, <laughs> organization ng mga urban poor at mga yeah. sektor sa kanayunan. Uh, that because they will need to continue to organize, to educate themselves. We will need to continue to mobilize. At bakit? Dahil Dati nang may mga hamon at problema ang ating lipunan. Kalusugan, oo, even before COVID. Ekonomiya, for sure, yung yeah. di pagkakapantay-pantay. That has been exacerbated by the pandemic and the quarantines, which we needed. But it will also be exacerbated if an anti-terror law will pass and be implemented. Kasi madaling i-misinterpret o, o i-demonize ang organisadong pagkilos ng mamamayan bilang terorismo ba? Oo nga, kami mga high school mga students, high school students, oh. college students, mm -hmm. yung mga, mga org dami na publication na nagrahayag ng opinion, mm -hmm. posible ba maging, <laughs> parang parang nakakatakot, no? ganun kabata, pero oh. <laughs> mabansagan na na it, terorismo. It reminds me of what, what the uh, Black Lives Matter people have been saying yeah. as well. No? That, during the time of Martin Luther King, it must have really been terrible, you know. And and we can also imagine that in 1972, mm -hmm. it, you know, it, yeah. uh, we really just need to well take it. You know, it's really what uh, Risa said. You know, it's nakakatawa, and I think we should uh, own our fear, no? Sure. But we shouldn't let it uh, uh, get the better of us. Oh. 
Tulad nung 1972, pinasok mismo ang Ateneo Campus, di ba? Ni Raid. May mga pinick up doon, inaresto, dinetain, may ilang namatay pa. And the, throughout the the martial law years and the anti-dictatorship struggle, naging bahaging Ateneo. Takot din siyempre uh, ang mga Atenista noon. Takot tayo. But I mean, starting with that historic article ni na Eman Lakaba sa Gaidon, di ba? Down, yes, from, the down from the hill. Yeah. Yung nagsalubong ang Filipinization movement sa campus. I mean, in that time and again now, I think timeless naman yung panawagan ng ating mga formators, di ba? To be men and women for others. So ngayon, yan ang panawagan sa atin. How will we be those persons for others sa panahon ngayon na parang nanunumbalik yung isang lumang bangungot? Yes. Uh, a theoretical question, kasi we're philosopher kami, mm. di ba? <laughs> Why do you think, yun nga, like, you know, you said, can it, it, they're making it sound like it's a bad thing to be a Democrat. Well, there are so many kinds of democracies naman, no? There's, we're, but it seems that being a Democrat these days is... It's really, when it's the opposite, you know, it's the good thing, and the opposite of that is the bad thing. Yes. Uh, <laughs> eh, siguro kasi, ang pinapersonify nila, it's a wave, hindi lang naman dito sa ating bansa, all over the world, di ba? Of yes. populism, of strongman rule, na nakakatagos kasi sa valid din ng mga frustration ng di lang mga kababayan natin, iba't ibang sambayanan, frustration sa formal democracy, elite democracy na bukang bibig demokrasya, okay, merong something of it, maybe politically, pero kinukulangan yung maraming tao, lalo na yung majority, in terms of, lalo na economic democracy, more equal in the economy, di ba? Ayun yes. naman yung pangako noon ng EDSA People Power Revolution, which I still call and and consider a revolution until today. It was a political revolution, no, unprecedented at that time, at nag-inspire ng marami pang iba. Pero when we won that, may hamon sa atin na palawakin pa yung political democracy beyond that change from a dictatorship to a democracy. At may hamon din sa atin palalimin siya to economic democracy and democracy in the social cultural sphere. So fast forward um di naman centuries, decades and generations, parang even all over the world nagkaroon ng frustration na it hasn't delivered enough at yeah. all. So then the rise of the populists, the strongmen. So ngayon, dahil yung mis- yung value na nandun pa rin sa demokrasya in terms of civil and political rights at karapatang pantao, hadlang yeah. sa... That's, that's another thing that they're making out like a bad thing, di ba? No, right. Sinisiraan talaga. Sinisiraan talaga. You know, yung... Reclaim. Yeah, the video that we showed before, you know, before the interview, uh, talks about that if if a government uh, overreacts to terrorism, mm-hmm. it actually uh, endangers getting the sympathy <laughs> the people will side with the terrorists. Because if the mentality of the, of the government is there's a silver bullet against uh, terrorism, yes. and then it overreacts, you know, it, 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 it thinks it's these measures that will counter terrorism. Uh, there is there is some evidence that people side with the terrorists more than the government. So maybe that's that's something that uh, we should tell them. You know, you might I, I well me you know I'm I'm a cynic and yet I'm hopeful. There is going to be a backlash. <laughs> there might be a backlash. It, yeah, the 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 uh, the result may be the opposite. True, because pag sinasabi mo na um, overreaction, meaning uh, undertaking law enforcement operations against the terrorist groups. Yes. Na dapat, and it's a duty of government to protect the security of its citizens laban sa anumang terrorist actions. Pero kung yeah. sobra, no, sisi- yeah. uh, lalabagin yung karapatan ng mga tao, hindi lang yung yeah. If it is simply uh, law enforcement, yeah, yes. it, it will not will, get the sympathy of the people. Oh, oh, or it yeah. will ende- uh, engender resentment yes. or alienation. Yeah. At 
mas uh, uh, dagdag pa doon if there are anti-terror actions by government pero kulang naman yung pagtugon doon sa roots of terrorism the poverty the alienation the discrimination etc yes yeah. yes hindi rin magiging mababaw at yeah. yung mga mas destructive yung epekto yes that's the that's the one Senator um, Risa, nabanggit mo kayo na sa sagot mo bago dito sa huling sinagot mo ay yung uh, nakinikilala mo na siguro kaya nauso itong strongman rule tong populist ay dahil nga may pananaw na nakulangan dun sa democracy uh, so ang parang ginasa ng nangyari ay pumunta naman dun sa kabilang extreme itong populist strongman pero may binabanggit ka rin kayo na gusto ko sanang paliwanag muli dapat sana ang ginawa natin na nagsimula ng people power ay palalimin Yes. Kasi inaamin naman natin na baka kulang nga yung demokrasya pa sa lalima at sa mm-hmm. sa visa. So oh. paano po ba yun? So it, kasi kala naman iba, kung hindi mo ubra to, doon ako sa kabilang sulok, ay sa kabilang dulo. Mm-hmm. Pero what would have been the at sa buong mundo yan, ha? hindi ko lang pinag-uusapan sa ng Pilipinas. Mundo, so, so what would have been the, the way to go para na naiwasan itong ganitong uh, kabilang kabilang uh, pag pag-swing doon sa kabilang dulo nung nung uh, nung 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 ano ba yan? Kabilang pendulum. Pendulum, pendulum, tama. Kabilang extreme. Kabilang extreme. So, uh, well, it's still yung mga walang kamatayang pinag-uusapan namin ni na Jovi noon nung nasa college kami. Uh, ang walang kamatayang agrarian reform. That's para true. Para yes. ma-empower yung mga magsasaka at ma-modernize yung agrikultura, mapakain yung ating buong bansa. Yeah, yeah. Yung uh, security of tenure sa mga manggagawa para sila rin makaahon sa kahirapan and they can they can swell the the endangered and disappearing middle class. Yes. Yung uh, pag, pagbubuo ng isang kultura ng solidarity and inclusivity on on many levels. Uh, ang dami ay yung, yung pag-engage natin sa ano bang modelo ng globalization dapat. Kasi the model of globalization that has emerged, napaka neoliberal, yeah. uh, has also created a lot of economic and social costs alongside the benefits. At differentiated din yun. Hindi, hindi equal yung pagbabahagi uh, sa benefits at hindi rin equal yung pagbalikat um, sa mga costs. Um, and then, of course, there are things na hindi pa namin naranasan nung nasa college kami. Technology, like the internet. Diba? Oh, this yeah, so we still had to type our papers. We had to type sa mga makinilya, di ba? Meron ko lang, hindi ko lang cellphone pa noon, meron lang mga pager, di ba? Yes. Uh, let alone uh, the, the internet. So, binago din ito yung, yeah. yung uh, enkwentro. Uh, between persons and among peoples at yan nakaapekto din sa usaping ito ng anong mode ba ng citizen participation at anong mode ng governance ang mas nakaka-capture sa puso at imahinasyon ng tao at mas nakaka-mobilize both for good and for evil. So sa sira sa video ngayon uh, senator para nakikita ko na itong pag-swing dun sa kabilang ano ng pendulum, kabilang tulo ng pendulum ay mga pakiramdam ng mga tao na they were excluded and or ignored yeah. no at yung kaya nga mga lista mm-hmm. natin sana yung agrarian reform itong lahat ang inatupag natin at pero meron namang mga sa mga mababatas natin na nagsusulong ng mga yan no para nga isulong yes. pa rin yung demokrasya yes. na malalim at mabisa imbis yeah. na ma-turn off na lang sa demokrasyang matamlay so yeah. uh, pero sa, parang parang nauna yata yung pag-swing dun sa kabilang dulo ng pendulum kaysa mm. yung tagumpay ng mga pagpapalalim, pagpapabisang yun. At saka dahil yung kasalukuyang administrasyon, which came to power through an election, di ba? ironically, ah. came to power through democratic means. Ah, Pero yes. ngayon, ginagamit ang mandato para i-undermine yung mga demokratikong struktura at, at mekanismo. So mahirap talagang ilaban yung pagpapalawak at pagpapalalim ng demokrasya hanggang sa ekonomiya, hanggang sa kultura. Kapag kailangan mong depensahan ulit, you know, shock of all shocks, akala natin institutionalized na, internalized na yung mga usapin ng human rights, gender sensitivity, national sovereignty, demokrasya in general. Yung pala, pati yun, kailangan depensahan ulit. At dahil pinagmumukhang yeah. mali or pinagmumukhang 
kontra uh, sa tao, pinagmumukha pang kontra sa mahihirap. So, we yes. are not in a terrible struggle <laughs> of interpretations. Parang cultural struggle yeah. din, di ba? Kasi, it's a cultural, ano. Uh, it's a cultural yes. struggle too, yeah. right? Maybe. Yes, yes, yes. But what things mean will mobilize or demobilize yeah. people. Yeah, it, the cultural aspect really might be the arena that we can uh, enter into yeah, at this point. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Wag nating ikikwit yon. Yeah. yeah. 1984 yeah. is so instructive. Marami pang yeah. iba. So if, Speaking if of not feel so Orwellian. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of not quitting, at itong wag tayo. Wag patakot tayo pero wag tayong maduruwag. Mm-hmm. Um, ano Siyempre, kanya-kanya tayo nang naiisip dito. Ano po bang pwede mangyari pag natakot tayo, nag-quit tayo at naduwag tayo? Siyempre, ako may naiisip akong pwede mangyari. No? Si Sir mm-hmm. Juby may naiisip. So, sa, sa, Senator Isa and Taveros, kapag bigla nag-sumuko ang mga tao at nagparayan alang dito sa mga ano, anong pwede mangyari? Anong, anong uh, kapahamakan ang napipinto ba pag maging gano'n? Hindi ko ma-imagine, Ron. Alam mo kung bakit? Because it's never happened before. Not for a long time. Not for forever. Marami tayong dinaan ng pagdurusa sa kasaysayan natin. From long ago pa, bago pa ng katipunan, lalo na panahon ng katipunan, and all the struggles for liberation and for change, for transformation down through the decades. At marami doon, mga kabataan at estudyante ang ano ha, nagbuo at nagbuo. Yes, katipunan. Tulad ng Atenista ngayon at yeah. mula nung katipunan hanggang anti-dictatorship struggle, never na nagparaya ng mahabang panahon ang Pilipino. Uh, Siyempre, oo nga, may at maya natatakot tayo, yung iba ay may at maya naduduwag, pero may mga bumabalik din. At uh, ako... Hindi ko talaga ma-imagine yung pinapa-imagine mo sa akin dahil nga Apo. always in our history as a people, as a country, umabot din tayo sa sandali na binuo natin yung loob natin at lumaban tayo. Yan na nga. Yan na nanalig ako. Gagawin din natin uh, yan ngayon. Meron din kasi uh, nag nagugula senator na parang ngayon daw parang naging less volatile ang mga tao dahil may social media totoo ba yun? parang baka ibang forma lang no kasi dati ang dali nating pagpaglusuban sa pagkita-kita tayo dito sa sa EDSA magkikita well, parang, ngayon parang ang tagal minsan para mag mag pagprovoke ng mga <laughs> ng mga dada, para, pero maalala din natin ha ah. uh, yung teknolohiyang yan which has been used so um maliciously para mag-demobilize din ng tao at para lokohin tayo sa fake news, sa state-sponsored propaganda, sa iba't ibang bansa. Naging bagay din naman siya ng mga pagkilos, uh, the Arab Spring. Arab Spring. Uh, yung yeah, Occupy. Yeah. So Hong Kong. Yeah. Occupy Hong Kong, Wall Street. Hong, Hong Kong. Kong. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, naging, naging platform din siya and then that moment was reached or created na isalin yung online activism to offline activism. So it's one continuum, may flow yan. So basta, well, medyo dehado tayo ngayon sa sa internet dahil pinagmumuka na ang dami-dami ng you know, populist or uh, authoritarian uh, na naniniwala or nagkakalat ng fake news. But there are also recent studies that are interesting that show it may not be actually that they're more than us. Baka it's, it's a, an, uh, an impression, a perception, or even an illusion. So, palagay ko yung internet, ano pa rin siya, area of contestation, arena of contestation, at dapat bawiin natin democratic space for debate, for civility again, for God's sake, for yes. truth, no? news, yes. facts. And, uh, so, so palagay ko, pwede pa rin siyang maging instrumento para sa pag pagpukaw uh, ng kamalayan ng tao, sa pag-oorganisa at sa pagpapakilos. In all those creative and active non-violent ways, alam ko capable tayo. Right. So, Risa, we have three more minutes. Yes, uh, yes Ron, you want... Yeah, 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 exactly. Pero sa three yeah. more minutes, baka mayroon kayong gustong... Uh, sabihin pa na uh, gusto niyo pang mabanggit tung- tungkol sa usaping ito o kahit lampas sa usaping ito. Ako personally, sasasabihin niyo, Ma'am Risa, parang gusto ko lang may, may sama niyo itong sagot dito sa 
personal kung tanong, no? Saan kayo kumukuha? You always seem so hopeful and cheerful in spite of <laughs> yung mga... Yung theater mga, yan! Yeah. Don't Pero forget! Kahit, ako, theater, theater din theater tayo, Sergio. Theater si Senator Risa, yeah, yeah, bago yeah, ka yeah. pinanganak. Theater din tayo, Sir Jovi. <laughs> theater din tayo, Sir Jovi. Yeah, Pero, but you might forget, she was really in the theater. Yes, yes. Ibig ko lang sabihin. Uh, Pero you might forget na, that part. <laughs> Napipikon din tayo, di ba? Pero sa, sa dami ng memes din na nakikita ko, na parang, at saka... Minority, di ba? So, ang dami talaga. Mas malaki talaga yung uh, yung kanilang, kanilang binabangga at kinakalabang mga... Well, before so, Risa, you know, there, 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 there's nothing to fear and fear itself. Yeah. That's 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 a slogan that we grew up with, not in eighty <laughs> three. <laughs> so yun nga po, yun sa yung, ano po yah kaya tao yung parang ganon na pwede yung uh, ipamahagi sa at mga taka pagini kalam niyo po to palabas namin. May nakikinig kayon pero may mag magbabalik dito kasi nakarecord naman to. Uh, ano po yung pwede yung ipatit na uh, dito sa well, may magandang libro yung isang paborito kong liberation theologian. Inaral natin, Jovi, sa Calibus. Yes, yes. Gustavo Gutierrez. At meron ding mga salita, ang dakilang si Ka Pepe Joke, no, na parang ganyang mga salita. To drink from our own wells. So siguro, yung mga bagay na unang nag-inspire sa atin para sa buhay na pinili natin, may at maya sa gitna nitong magulong, mismong magulong buhay natin na nababurn out tayo or uh, minsan ha, um, nagiging pessimistic tayo, halos gustong mawala ng pag-asa kasi ano ba yan? Balikan natin yung mga batis na iyan. Balikan natin yung mga inspirasyon na iyan. Uh, yung pagmamahal natin sa mga uh, particular na tao at yung pagmamahal nila sa atin. Yung uh, pagmamalaki natin sa pagiging Pilipino. Yung sining na nag inspire at nagbibigay ng ligaya sa atin. Yes. Yung kalikasan na ang ganda-ganda. Tingin lang tayo sa bintana, o oh, umuulan. At yung ating pananampalataya, di ba? Ang Diyos naman ang unang nag-imagine ng lahat ng itong mabubuti na pinagsusumikapan natin. O yes. uh, natin. So, and then, when we look around, we're not alone. Meron tayong mga kindred spirits, meron tayong mga fellow travelers. So, we're not alone. Yes. And nang hinatid tayo dito sa puntong ito ng mga nauna sa atin, tayo rin naman, kahit hindi natin makikita yung lahat ng elemento ng gusto nating marating, eh, sa ating sama-samang paghakbang, paglakbay, Maihatid din natin yung iba, lalo na yung mga susunod na henerasyon. So, yun, wala tayong talo. <laughs> Kahit matalo oh, sa okay. paglaban, uh, panalo yung ating pakikibaka. Sigurado yan. Oo oh, nga. Oo oh, nga. <laughs> diba? Kahit matalo tayo sa mga laban, Sigurado wala yan. tayong talo. Wala! Lahat ng mabuti so, walang talo. Oh, it's so lundagin mo, baby. Lundagin mo, baby! Oh, oh. Ah, mga father for y'all's babies tayo, yes! Yeah, Ang meron, mo. pag may meron. Yan. At so, yun din yun, no? yung bati ng ating uh, inspirasyon. Yun, yun din ang pinag-uusapan ni Father nung, nung panahon yeah, na yun. Yeah. Kahit nasa kabilang bakod siya. Correct. <laughs> oh, no, no. Alright. Yeah, so uh, yun po, ito po ang ating programa ng Nundagin Mo Baby ngayong Enero 15, uh, tatlong araw. Special matapos. honor, Riza. Oh, yeah. I'm Pat- so tatlong... happy to invite it. Ito so rin happy. po ang araw ng kalayaan episode kasi Correct. once a week lang kami. So, pinagkakapuri namin na uh, uh, ito aming episode ngayon, nakasama ka, uh, Senator Risa mm-hmm. Ontiveros. Maraming salamat po sa inyong pag-follow up, sa inyong napaka... Thanks, uh, Riza. Yes, yes. Let kayo, stay healthy. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Senator. One big fight. One big fight. One big fight. Yes. God bless you, Senator. Animo, Ateneo. Yes. Sige po. Sige po. Bye rin sa ating mga tagapinig. Bye, Sir Joby. Bye, Senator. Thank you very much. All right. See you all. See you all. Just
Meron? Ano nga ba ang meron? Paano nga bang mabuhay ng tapat sa meron? Don't you wish you can relive your philo classes? The terror teachers? The terrible oral exams? Or the even terrifying but liberating and life-changing aha moments? Lundagin mo, baby! Here's your chance! Lundagin mo, baby! Kasama ang mga pilosopong sina Jovi Miroy at Ron Kapinding. Lundagin mo, baby! Leaping upward, leaping forward. Lundagin mo, baby! Leaping to greater heights, to greater wisdom, to greater magis. Lundag na, Ateneo!